again, and I'm back, and we're recording, and we're here with my main man, my brother, Steven Small Warner. Um, you've known him, you've seen him, but this brother is a brilliant director, a brilliant visual artist um, with so much talent under his belt. Right now, first, first of all, he's one of the first people that I saw handle the vertical movement, the vertical film movement which is big, one, because I'm a, I'm a stock owner in Snapchat, boom. So, yes, sir, I know all about vertical filmmaking. It's not an easy task. So, Stephen, let's jump right into it, because this C-19 is on fire. People love it. Talk to me about your step into the vertical realm. How did it happen? And... Talk to me about what you're doing about it right now. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for that gracious introduction. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been playing with, um, I shouldn't say playing because, man, how did I get into vertical? So um, from 2011 to 2013, I, I lived in Singapore for two years. Um, uh, while I was out there, I was studying my MFA in creative producing. Um, uh, with NYU, it was a small group of us from our, around the world uh, trying to figure out what the future of film and cinema would look like. Um, things were going across platform. Netflix was just beginning to disrupt everything. Um, and one of the things that we were doing and that I was doing back then was thinking about this idea of distribution. Um, this idea that, you know, for the most part, uh, especially minorities haven't had a hold on it. Um, and the ability for it to open up now, especially with your Netflix and um, you know, all these OTT platforms, all the top platforms coming out. I was really trying to find a way to uh, uh, bring something new uh, into the scene without having to um, do anything crazy new on the back end. Uh, so after I graduated, I graduated with um, uh, two theses. One was a technology platform and one was a film. So I've been always trying to kind of pair these together, but it's not until I came back to New York at the end of 2013, I was shooting a uh, fashion show. I was in the pit with a bunch of other photographers and I had literally turned my camera and just filmed some of it vertical because it felt better. I could see the entire dress and all this other stuff. And when I came back and loaded it up to my, to my computer, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I, I rotated it and stuff. And I was like, I wonder what it would look like on my phone. So I transitioned it to my phone. And as soon as I saw it, as soon as I experienced vertical, it clicked immediately to me. Um, it was something that had a different experience uh, altogether. It was something that um, was on a screen that I knew would uh, grow uh, as far as the, the, the ownership and the population of it uh, would grow. And the third, um, the third thing that really got me when I saw it was the fact that I knew that mobility in the mobile phone and mobile connection on the internet side was also moving very quickly and growing. Um, so when I kind of like saw all those things, I was super excited. Um, I went to, I even went to Sasha and was like, yo, um, this is <laughs> crazy. Like, yo, look at this. And she's like, yo, but like nobody should. I'm like, nah, this is it. So it's something, um, the way I got into vertical was literally experimentation. And the way that I continue with vertical was continue, continuing to experiment with what the form is. Um, as those years came up from 2013, uh, for example, in 2018, we saw that um, YouTube, they changed their indexing algorithm to be mobile first. These are things that I started to see at, when big companies do that, when big companies like Google, uh, who's based upon their indexing, changes it specifically for mobile, I, you could already understand that, like, listen, this is about to be something that's much bigger than just, um, than just kind of like a, a momentary thing um, that, that these are major corporations changing up their workflow to accommodate mobile first. 
So yeah. these are things that um, started to really excite me. And then creatively, it also felt like something that was just different to do. It was, it took a different kind of approach to being able to create cinema. Uh, and it's, you know, cinema is something that I love. I, I fell, in, fell in love with cinema years ago. So being able to place um, my attention and my uh, craft into a place that was kind of new, nobody was really doing it. Nobody saw the value in it. Not nobody, but most people didn't. Um, you know, that, that just gave me an outlet to really, to really be the kind of innovator that I wanted to see. So mm. that's mm. how I got vertical. Mm. Be the innovator that I want to see. Dang, bro. That's yeah. hard. I got to let that settle in for a second. Because, <laughs> you know, I think so many of us are afraid to try new things. Talk to me about that courage, that thing inside of you. Man. It's hard, man. You got to you gotta tell people what, what it means to make those kinds of decisions like that because a lot of people just won't do it. Yeah, uh, it, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy at all. Um, it was definitely something that took a lot and, and I've, I've been um, very blessed to have a family that support me, friends that support me. I have uh, a partner that supports me wholeheartedly. Um, um, these types of uh, people around me really helped me. I went through a lot of dark stages in the sense that you know, when you're doing, you know, it sounds good from a, like, from hindsight, obviously, like, oh, cool, like, you've gotten a vertical now, and it's innovative, and, but when you're at the precipice of doing something that people don't do, you're literally thinking completely outside of what people consider to be normal, um, and because of that, you also have to sit with yourself and think, for me specifically, well, if I'm writing a, a, a feature length script and you got to write a feature or you got to write or make a short in order to put into a festival in order to be seen, how do I do this, you know, and how do I start writing for, you know, person on a mobile device uh, and, and taking my short and putting my effort into that, which doesn't have an established way yet. I, you know, I, I would have to cut down trees. I, and I was kind of battling with myself to be like, listen, you know, this is the innovation, but there's no way for, you know, there's no way ahead. There's just trees. You would have to continuously cut down trees in order to make a pathway that, you know, you would want to get to a place where it's like, okay, well, I'm actually developing projects on the level that I want to develop them on. Um, and you know, I I, I, sw I swallowed a lot of fear, and that's exactly what I did. Um, one of the first breaks into it that I had was being uh, one of the first filmmakers in residence at Tribeca Film Institute. Um, it was great in the sense that I was able to kind of start really implementing strategy on, okay, how do you develop vertical, you know, film? Even you know, for example. A feature mobile series. What is that? Um, how do you develop the idea of actually using mobile devices as the predominant uh, camera source uh, for vertical because it shoots native, uh, it gives you lens choices, it gives you mobility, and you can give it to younger filmmakers and they can start practicing craft. These were all things that I felt were silly to have to wait to get good enough or wait to shoot a okay first feature in order to truly continuously practice the craft itself. So those are things uh, that opportunity gave me the, the groundwork and the time to kind of go, you know, oh, all right, how would you do it, Steve? And since I've done that, it was, you know, I was able to meet people and groups of people that supported uh, vertical filmmaking. Um, even at T um, Tribeca Film Institute, they were more geared to 360 and um, mm. AR as the innovations, but I had already looked into those and I had already known that like from a distribution standpoint, 360 and AR would really thrive from the mobile device first, as opposed to your home screen, like your TV screen. Um, 
which that's what was happening. So like I was oh even when I had opportunities, I was still battling in the sense of like, yo, well, you know, this is what I see. And, you know, what I'm saying is valid comes from my personal experience, not the experience I have because, you know, I, I, I worked for Instagram or I worked for Snap, but I knew. So I was even within doing what I was doing, I was still kind of trying to convince people a lot and battling with people. Mm. And one of the things that I had to realize for myself is that there's no amount of credentials that will validate your purpose. There is no amount of credentials that will validate your purpose. And for me, it felt like a purpose to move forward with, you know, uh, being able to create vertical content because it was the freedom. It had the diversity and the freedom that we saw from independent filmmaking uh, from the 90s. It had that freedom that we saw from the advent of having Super 16 and independent filmmakers being able to use a cheaper um, uh, way to create in order to have a, a way to distribute. Um, that's like black exploitation films. All of these things came from these technological changes and shifts in the hands of independence, you yeah. know, not in the stat, not in the established. Way. So, you know, that sense of not not looking for anything else to validate me besides my purpose and my sincerity, which is a part of a Malcolm X quote that really got me into thinking like, listen, this is not about what you've done. This is not about being, you know, uh, uh, Christopher Nolan or Spike Lee. This is about being able to, you know, bring something into fruition that you were called to bring into uh, yourself. So it took me a long time when you talk about courage, it took me a long time to, um, to build enough of the choices of courage. Every choice was a choice to say, no, I'm not gonna do it that way, I'm gonna do it this way. Every choice, and I think building that courage, I sit here now and I'm able to talk to you when you're talking about C19 and like, you know, this whole vertical thing is blossoming and, and Quibi just put billions of dollars into the vertical market. Like all of these things are coming now, but it was because I made choices, smaller choices of courage along the way that I can sit here feeling in my full uh, value today. So that's what I will say to brilliant. Take, uh, that's, that's, that's brilliant. That's that's okay. This this conversation is over. <laughs> you just you just wrapped it up, bro, so tight. Uh, you said two things to me though that I do want to open up real quick. The shift in technology brought about this innovation. Mm -hmm. That's hip hop. Mm -hmm. That's straight up hip hop. Period. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, anybody that's watching, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up. Mm -hmm. That's hip hop. The other thing is that these little choices led you to this larger opportunity of courage. I, to me, that is brilliant. I can't express to you how empowered I feel hearing you say that. I can only imagine someone who is sitting at home right now really wondering about themselves, about the choices that they're making or that they've made. Because if they're watching this, they are making choices, okay? This is for a specific group of people who need to know, right? So that's why I'm talking to you, because people need to know what brought you to that plateau, what brought you to that mountain. What you've just shared is priceless and gold. What can you further add about your daily regimen? Because it takes, Sasha said something that was very important earlier, present moment, wonderful moment. Mm -hmm. Share with me your personal philosophy that leads you to those realizations, those mini victories that you have on a daily basis. Yeah, uh, and you mentioned, and you mentioned uh, uh, 
<laughs> Sasha, who's obviously, well, not obviously, but she was also a guest on the show. And, um, you know, she, she obviously, I've been working with her for years. So she's uh, also helped me remain present. Um, the things that I found internally, uh, and this is like beyond just, you know, uh, film and vertical, but creatively and spiritually, the things that I found uh, in this time and these hardships that I had, I was putting in a lot of work and not getting anything back. Um, that really tested my faith. And I had to come back to my faith and what I believe in um, in order to rectify some of the things that I felt about what I considered to be doing the work, uh, but not seeing anything come back from it. Um, uh, but having the faith that I was doing the right thing. So one of the things that I, I, I grabbed from my days when I was a, a, a athlete, I, I ran track in college, I played soccer up and, you know, all throughout high school was the, the discipline and the, the ritual of, 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 of discipline. So I started to, number one, I started to meditate a lot. Um, I became, uh, in this time, I became a, a, a Buddhist and also started chanting. And I implemented practices of faith within my daily regimen. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, even a simple prayer every day is something that helps the creative soul. Um, creativity is kind of the, 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 the crux of why we are all here. We were, we were made, our bodies are tools of creation. So the idea of practicing faith every day definitely helped me continue to make the decisions of courage, having courage every day. Um, the, the routine and the regimen, waking up and kind of being in a position where, you know, I'll read a page or I'll write uh, uh, what I was thinking about. I've had, I have so many ideas uh, and sometimes I get caught in my head with the ideas. Uh, and one of the things that I've learned to do is if I can flush the ideas out onto paper, I've already made the first step of creation. Uh, creation is a repetitious thing. And it doesn't mean that you need to kind of like do the same thing every day, but you do want to get into a practice where once something is in your head, how is it that you get it out? If you can get it out in a physical form, then you've already made the creation, you know, like, hanging on to um, creating just like I have hung on to courage by practicing and an making an example of, of, making an example for myself of completion every day has helped even creatively. So I try to continue to create every day, whether that means I write down you know, my thought uh, and it's not some type of like major narrative or something like that. Or, you know, even if I, um, uh, uh, you know, draw something in a, in a sketch, something in a book, I try to make an active choice to continue creating every day. So daily, those are the things that I do. I either write or I, you know, I, I might touch an edit. I might just go pick up my camera and shoot something that I'm interested in, but you know, uh, to feed your curiosity is to feed your creativity. And I think that uh, to be able to do that every day, uh, again, while practicing the faith that led you to your creation, that led you to your idea, that led you to some beautiful thought, um, you know, those things are the things that keep me going every day as a as a daily practice. So. Uh, some, somewhere in there is a good answer. <laughs> somewhere in that, my practice, and I'm sure. not, even, I'm not even a person. I'm, and I'll tell, I'll tell you this: I'm not a person who is. I get bored very quickly, and I need new inputs. Like I'm, I can be repetitious and like chill and read, but I need, constantly need new inputs. I, I used to take random trips and then come back. So I'll just randomly go somewhere just to get my, my senses into a different space. So mm. it, took me, it took me some, some 
you know, real coming to coming to myself and looking at myself in a mirror to kind of really find the things that work for me um, every day. And just in a broad spectrum, like I said, practicing faith and practicing creativity in the smallest of ways. Um, it's also how I built everything that I do with vertical. Um, I call it, um, the, the other day I wrote down something and told my friend that uh, it's a particle of the future. If you can write something small down, it's a particle of that bigger thing in the future. So every vertical that I make is a particle of bigger, bigger work that I'm, I'm working on or whatever. At least that's how I see it. Word, word. Very wise words, brother. And, you know, I'm, I don't have much more to ask you um, because you've done such a good job of being so succinct, succinct in your response um, and making it relevant to the average viewer. Um, filmmakers and film professionals are going to watch this and they're going to go, I get it. I get what he's saying. And, and somewhere in my life, I can do that too. You know, but I also feel like the regular people, laymen, I was talking to Sasha earlier about Sasha Kelly Jackson, by the way, star of C-19, your mm -hmm. co-collaborator. Um, I was talking to her earlier about um, the average nine to five individual who is who's feeling, you know, um, stuck. You know, right now we're watching the news and we're seeing people that are actually losing their freaking minds. They're marching to their capitals because, you know, and there's some political stuff going on here. There's some, there's some racial stuff going on here. There's some socioeconomic stuff going on here when I say this. But there are people losing their minds, one, because they don't know what you just said. They don't have that thing in their lives, in their heart, where they can make that happen, that they can separate themselves from all of this to use the power of the universe and creation to do something positive. So they're not doing that. They're losing their freaking mind staying at home, cooped up with one another, with no real positive outlet. So I think that what you just said is so important and so key uh, to, you know, a happier future for all involved. Um, it should be, it should be minted. It should be pressed and sold or just given away in little parcels to people as a, as a daily gift. Um, because I, I just, I don't know about our, our situation right now. I don't know about the world. And, and part of, my putting these, kind of putting me in a situation with a conversation with somebody else using technology to make it happen <clears throat> is to sort of reach not only the places inside myself where I fall, I falter, I have doubt, I'm, I'm feeling the pressure and weight of the world, what are we going to do next, but also for the, all those people that I know that don't even have half of the vision that we have half of the strength that we have. They don't have half the determination to stick to something, to make something beautiful for free, just because they know it will help someone else or because they, you know, because they just wanted to do it. So I appreciate you participating in this conversation and taking the time, not only because this is the first time I think in all 22 or 23 quarantine conversations that I've had where we didn't really get into the, specifics of the quarantine we didn't really talk about it you, we didn't have to because your position is so firmly and based in the present moment of what you're doing and that is the lesson of this particular conversation itself i'm so blessed to be able to hear what you just said and to be able to share that with others i thank you for being here today brother i really do thank you thank you Thank you so much. Um, I um, I will say that like uh, a lot of this came from me being in uh, putting myself into quarantine like situations. Mm. So you know, it, this is a matter of how do you adjust internally with the things that you can control, um, and not you know uh, 
just falter to the external things going around you. Um, those things are, are, are based in very much so the, the focus on abundance. Everybody has an ability to focus on abundance internally. You have an ability to think uh, what you want to think. Um, and if those thoughts are on the side of abundance, you do find that externally abundance is, is what is represented. And I think those are the things that um, I've held on to uh, even through this hardship and this time. Um, one of those things that I was able to hold on to an abundant nature is that, well, I know certain people that have information, maybe I should reach out to them. Uh, we reached out to the doctor that we followed in Uganda um, uh, for our, our uh, Stu 55 uh, is a documentary um, uh, platform that uh, I run, uh, that I've co-founded, and we called him up and we were able to start getting him to do lives with other medical professionals on the front lines. It was something that I was able to do. It didn't take too much out of me, similar to how you know, you're, you're being able to do what you're doing with filmmakers. I thought it was beneficial to really get the, the ideas from the front lines and we were able to get that together. Um, so definitely that's, that's a part of, you know, focusing on the abundance in this time. Um, another thing that I did was I was able to um, really sit down and finally get a, a, a book together, um, a, a ebook that I have on uh, pre-order right now, it drops April 30th, about vertical filmmaking and the innovation in cinema. Uh, again, going back to, to, to what kind of brought us here, those are, that's something that I'm very excited about, I'm excited for because it kind of pairs all my experience uh, with vertical filmmaking and some kernels of just creation. Um, I've created a lot of work uh, since I picked up a camera um, in uh, 13 years ago. Um, and I've learned a lot from that. So I put it in the book and uh, hopefully young filmmakers can see and have, uh, they can see my, some of the, the, the path that I have left and chopped down uh, even a little bit on being able to actually go from your, your feelings of watching a movie or seeing something that you want to create and actually being able to create it and practice it, especially in filmmaking, where to practice it costs a lot of money. Um, I really wanted to be able to let filmmakers know that, you know, you can practice the craft without, you know, killing yourself or without putting the house on, you know, taking, taking a mortgage out of a house uh, or taking the equity out of a house and, and having to put that towards a film. Uh, you can practice the things that you need to practice in order to master skills skills that will help you. Um, it doesn't matter if it's vertical or not, you still have to block and stage. You still have to talk to, to actors, you still have to produce, you still have to develop. Um, all of those things come um, in the, the same, you still have to do those in vertical filmmaking. And I think those are the things that are important for young filmmakers to be able to practice so that they don't have to go, you know, uh, now I, you know, they don't have to be first timers. Uh, we don't have to wait for the idea of them being first timers mm -hmm. and get into a system that has a funnel, like, uh, you know, getting into festivals and stuff, which is all good. I, you know, that's a great way to get in, you know, get your name out there. But when you said something earlier in this discussion about hip hop, that you're probably the first person to say it outside of me trying to get people to think in the same right. We are at a position with vertical that is similar to where we were with hip hop, with the innovation of technology creating a new form. And I think in this situation, we're seeing vertical become a new genre of video. And you know, it, it, I want nothing more than to have people that look like me that yearn for the diversity and yearn for the knowledge in order to create their stories, be able to do so and be able to get paid from it and to be able to learn from it and to grow from it. So uh, I say that, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's something that uh, I just wanted to get out because I Art. think it's an important idea 
that we people of color get into vertical filmmaking as we got as we created hip hop we can create a new genre of video and i think that's super powerful and i just wanted to leave with that big ups steven small water big ups that was super brother um tell me and tell everybody watching how they can follow you how can we find you how can we see your work uh, you can find you can find me at Small Warner S M A L L W A R N E R anywhere. You can Google it, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram. I usually, obviously, I'm a I'm in the mobile space, so I I'm frequently on my Instagram. Also, want to definitely shout out Stu Fifty Five. We do a live show every Thursday. Um, uh, we produced a, a feature. Um, a feature documentary that we're working on now and we have a fundraiser going on right now for everyone in New York um, that we are raising money for PPE for Brooklyn Hospital. Um, it's important that they get PPE right now in this time as you know and we just wanted to be a part of it and try to try to put our hands into it so that's something else. At, um, at stoop underscore 55 is 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 uh um the handle for our instagram so definitely check that out i appreciate you so much for having me on here um this has uh, been fantastic steve um i'm so glad we reconnected after uh, so many years and uh, I, again i was telling sasha i have great memories of that time um you know that we worked together and uh this is a great, great thing that you've been able to accomplish, and I'm just happy to be able to explain it and show it to more people and be a part of the uh, growth of this genre of, of film that you are the pioneer of, but I can see have, it very clearly. Have you, have you, have you, before we leave, have, mm -hmm. have you had a vertical, have you had verticals in the Queen City Film Festival? One, one, and let me tell you, <laughs> we had a project, and there was it was controversy because some people liked it, some people didn't like it. They it was great to me. I thought it was fantastic. It was well done. I'll send it to you later. It's called uh, the Juju series. It's okay. a comedy. I thought it was great. A lot of people liked it, but some of my filmmaking, you know. People, they go, hey, ooh, what is that? You know, hey, it doesn't fit. Hey. And I was like, I don't get it. This yeah. is hot. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was mean, like, this I, is dope. Definitely, as long as, long as you continue to keep an a ear and an eye open for the verticals out there. Um, no doubt. That's all I wanted to know. Definitely. No, for sure. We could get some more in there, brother. We could get some more. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to push C19 to my, you know, to my judging panel right now, uh, so they can. We're probably gonna have a meeting later on, you know, based on this conversation and everything we've done. But I know for a fact that um, what you say to be true about vertical filmmaking is it's the wave of the future. I already, I told you, I own Snap. I'm about to start looking at Quibi. Uh, you know, these genres are big time, and uh, you know, I certainly want to be a part of those production uh, avenues and, and a part of those teams. So, um, sure. you know, listen, everybody, big ups to Steve and Small Warner. Yeah, Follow yeah, this man. Yeah. Go to the Queen City Film Fest NJ YouTube page to check out the uh, C-19 episode one. I'm hoping that we get more episodes soon so we can just string this story together because it's so be dope. It's so dope. And, um, you know, once again, the festival is scheduled for October 23rd to the 25th uh, in the historic city of Plainfield, New Jersey, my hometown. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do it because of these constrictions, but be sure, rest assured, we will be going digital. We will be going with a, a digital portal. I mean, we will be showing films from all over the world. Uh, I can tell you at this point right now, I've received at least 20 hours of film. Uh, and that's only after a month of submissions. So let's keep those films coming. Let's go. Let's go Queen City Film Festival. Stephen Small Warner, big ups, my brother. Thank you so much. We are out. We are out. Out. Mm -hmm.